That's the third question. Yes, and uh, our, my third question is, and we know that the majority of the problems in the Middle East arises from the lack of understanding and love of people to one, for one another. We are believers in, the, uh, in one God, we love the same prophets, and we are the sons and daughters of the prophet a Adam and Eve. We love prophet Jesus and Mary we, with all our hearts. They are very dear to us. How can we help conservative Christians and conservative Muslims understand this, and what do you think would be the best way to instill love and understanding in people's hearts to encourage them to embrace friendship and love for each other? Well, thank you for bringing that up. I've been in lots of different dialogues. Uh, I remember I was in uh, one dialogue in Washington, D.C., and a, um, it was near the end of the dialogue. It was Evangelical for Human Rights. Uh, and one of the last uh, panelists said, any religion that thinks it's the only way is bad religion. And he was saying this to evangelicals. You know, we, we do believe Jesus is the way. And so we all stood up and said, wait, wait, uh, let's talk about this. <coughs> and uh, basically we said, my brother, look, uh, isn't it possible for us to, to believe that our way is the, is the truth and yet love people and reach out in dialogue? Uh, one of the statements I use to describe uh, Jesus and some of our peacemaking effort is this. I said, Jesus modeled and taught exclusive truth claims and inclusive love aims. Uh, so I've been kind of sharing that, teaching that, trying to model that. Um, and uh, we had a meeting. I was consulting for Yale University the Divinity School a couple years ago, and we had a conference called the Built Hope Conference. And we purposely gathered the more conservative uh, Muslims, Christians, and uh, Jews to come to the table. Uh, it was a, a very rich time, and I think this is the kind of thing that needs to happen again and again. Um, I think what people fear is this. People fear that when we come together uh, that somehow partnering for peace um, means that we're trying to dissolve our distinctive differences and into a kind of a one world religion. And uh, of course, I, I totally disagree with that. Do not believe that. But I think that's a fear that people have, especially conservatives. Um, uh, from my background as, as an evangelical, I, I go to many uh, dialogues and you'll have the liberals, liberal Christians, talking with Muslims. And I've had Muslims say, I, I can relate to you much better. They don't even believe in the virgin birth, and we both believe in the virgin birth. Uh, so th the challenge, uh, I, I think the challenge you're raising is so crucial. How do we get conservative Muslims and Christians together? Um, I've done it before. We're, that's one of our main um, emphasis uh, in Peace Catalyst. Uh, as you know, evangelicals don't always have a good name. They're not always known for peace, and we're trying to change that. Uh, but they're, in their finest moments, evangelicals are, are radically Jesus-centered and want to be good news people. So uh, we're trying to challenge them to do that. Um, in one of our uh, Love Your Neighbor dinners, where we get Christians and Muslims together, we were having a time of Q&A. And uh, a Christian brother raised his hand and said to uh, Sheikh Mahmoud, uh, Sheikh, how can we work towards peace? And he said, he surprised everyone. He says, read the gospel and obey it. <laughs> so in, in some ways, that's what we've been trying to do in Peace Catalyst International. We don't really need to have an imam teach us that, but it was very refreshing. And uh, that was a good word on his part. Yes. Well, actually, we read the Gospel and we read the Torah all the time, also the Quran, of course. And yes. uh, Mr. Adnan Okta has written a book about, actually, about the common, commonalities of the Gospel and the Quran. And this is only kind of its, uh, of its kind, yeah. uh, the only, only sample of its kind. Yeah. And I, I will, I'm going to read you, actually, from the Quran. This is essence in Islam. Allah says uh, in one verse, I seek refuge in Allah from a curse Satan, say, we believe in Allah and what has been sent down to us 
and what has been sent down to Abraham, Ishmael, and Isaac, and Jacob, and the tribes, and what Moses and Jesus, and all of the prophets were given by their Lord. We do not differentiate between any of them, Allah says. In another verse, Allah says, you will find the people most affectionate to those who have Iman, for, to the Muslims, Allah says, and, and uh, are those who say we are Christians, Allah says. So Christians are very close to us. It's not only dialogue. We should ally, actually, alliance against irreligious philosophies altogether to bring peace. This is very important because yeah. we have so much in common. Of course, we have differences in details. We don't pay attention to that yeah. because Allah orders so. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Um, well, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that, Aftar. Uh, I want to show this here. I actually happen to have this right here on my desk. Yes, yes that, that is the book, advice. Wisdom and Sound Advice from the Torah. <laughs> And also another one okay. about the gospel also. Yes, uh, I actually have that one too. I was digging for it, but I couldn't find it. Uh, and I've had a few of my friends that had, had mentioned this very thing. Yeah. And uh, they asked me the same question. And what I told them was that uh, right off the bat, don't, don't concentrate on the differences we have. Concentrate on the similarities that we have. Uh, yeah. And then go from that. Don't start from the bottom and go up. Start from the top and go down. Look at what we have in common. Um, yeah. Because there's much more in common than we have in difference. Uh, and we just debate the differences all the time. We're not going to get to these.